What's up, man? It's Serge, it's my dude with Dope. Over here in Tendo. It's got a podcast on this shit. Wasn't the one to get on the roll. Brought a bitch and then I'm on the roll. Step how I step cause I'm on the go. Fucking a free bitch from Monaco. She wanna love on me, she said the vibe. But I said I don't know. Said he better than me, I told him you try. Catch out like Geronimo. What's good, do over don't purple world episode 28? And today we're here with Mr. Serge TNT or just Serge. What do you go by? Because your Instagram Serge TNT. I just go by Serge. You just go by Serge. There's like some soda company out there named Serge. So I can't <laughs> it, bro. bro, everybody be calling you Serge TNT though. That I know at least. I guess it like sticks, but at the same time, it's like, uh, whatever. Bro, it was cool. <laughs> What's been going on though? How's everything going? Doing good, bro. Dropping music. Everything's going well. You the dropped videos. a video three weeks ago for Caught Up. Caught Up? How was that? Yeah, shot it. Oh, you're the one who shot it? Which one of you? Both of you? Oh, wait. I wish you guys were in the podcast. So you shoot videos together, even though you're off camera. All right. Talk about that, even though they're not here. Like, Tough explain ass that. video. Working with them. Really, like, just a random ass. Like, bro, I didn't even think someone was going to do that good. I just dropped it, like. Because I just didn't really care. I just, I'd be dropping now, like, just to drop. Because, like, bro, there's no point of holding that shit. Like, for real. I was going to say, because that's the thing with most <laughs> artists, bro. And it's like, if I was an artist, I 100% get it. Because you want to be a perfectionist. So many artists just vault music and don't drop shit for, like, a year or yeah, anything. I'll, I'll do some shit like that. No. Like, you're the polar opposite, I feel like. Because I feel like you don't give a fuck. I feel like that's why you've been seeing so much success. Uh, success. Tongue twister. Got a little bit of alcohol in me. <laughs> um, Fucking, you know what I mean, though. Like, you don't care from what I see. You'll just, like, all right, I'm in the mood to drop a song. Like, I'm just going to drop this shit. And it does good because you have the fan base for it. And you've been fucking just dropping consistently. But what goes through your mind when you go to drop a song? Is it just, like... After World is Blue, I decided, like, I'm just going to drop, bro. Just like, there's no, no point in just giving. holding it. And it's been working. Like, I'll just no drop some, like, three singles, four singles, five. And then, boom, a whole, like, project. Damn. To me, like, plays don't matter. i rather, like, you really digest that, that shit. So, like, World is Blue, like, there's mad songs, but like, yeah. people really digested that shit and liked it a lot. I was going to cover that last, but let's just get into that fucking now, because that was your main project. What was the process of making that? Like, was it a year in the making? Nah, or man, like... Some quick shit? Like, two months. Two months? A month. Like, Except it was really just as soon as I stepped in L.A., I locked in with my manager, Ben, and we just, like, went crazy, bro. Talk. Oh, shit, my bad. Keep going. I didn't mean to cut you off. That was it. Oh, that was it? Oh, I was going to say, talking about L.A., you spent a lot of time there? Because I feel like almost every time I've talked to you, it's either been you're going to L.A. or you just got back from I L.A. just got back from L.A. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, every time I'm talking to you or hear about you, it's either you're going to L.A. the next day. Like, they saw you at um the Pierre show. Yeah, it was Like, there. KZ and shit saw you there. They're like, oh, he's about to go to L.A., but he said he'd tap in when he gets back from L.A. And then I just randomly yeah, shot you like, DM. I woke up, like couple hours before Pierre. I mean, after Pierre, I bro. had to go to LA. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How's it like over there, though? What do you do? You I feel it, extra just, creative? I love it. My brain starts running, bro. Like, everything works over there. Everything. Music every day. I, bro, last time I just I just went. I made like 15 songs in a week. Jesus Christ. Your workflow, we're going to get into that a little later. But from what I've seen, the two studio sessions, I wasn't even there for the one today, but I walked out of doing a podcast and they're like, this dude just made four songs in an hour. <laughs> like how that we'll just get into it now how the hell do you make songs that quick like is it freestyled is it written i never wrote you never wrote nah ever before nah probably like my first song but like that after that i was like bro this shit sucks i'd rather just say shit bro <laughs> what yeah. like never never nah like I, sp I my mom drops right now i've never sat down like i'm gonna write this down and i'm gonna drop it like so not one song on all dsps right now is written jesus christ Jesus Christ. So, I know this might be a little bit weird, but here versus L.A., like, you got to freestyle some shit. Where you feel more creative at? How, over there, you think it's easier? Is it easier over here? Know, does it not I step even in Boston, I feel like the man, yo. I feel like you do? that nigga, yo. Because, like, bro, I begin recognized sometimes now, so it's like, oh, damn. Right. So, like, I guess in Boston, like, at the studios, it made me feel like that nigga. Because like, it's more home. Like, you, know, uh, like yeah. you feel the love? Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's weird because Boston, bro, is not a state that's known for showing love, and you're not even from Boston. No, that's man. the that's the funny part. You're from New Hampshire. I don't know yeah. where from New Hampshire, but I don't know yeah. if you want to say that. Um, but what was what was it like growing up over there? I'm from Manchester. That's right. You're from up. Manchester. I, I was I'd flop around houses a lot. I went from Manchester to Nashua. I go everywhere. I stayed in Lowell for a little bit. Damn. But like, at first it was like annoying because I came from Brazil and shit. Oh, you're from Brazil? Yeah. My girlfriend's Brazilian. Oh, that's it. My girlfriend's Brazilian. What the fuck? Language is, like, hard to learn at first, but then, like, once you get the hang of it, like, 
after like first, first grade, I was straight. That's way more interesting than being from New Hampshire. So what was that like? Or how old were you when you moved here? Six. I, I, Six. I, so you, you got some got memories? Enough, yeah. You got some memories? What part Yo, of Brazil? Damn. Uh, right next to Rio is called Spirit Santo. You were, in, you were in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the jungle. Or right by the jungle. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's lit. I miss it. But I don't know. I'd rather be here, bro. When? My life is way better out here. Obviously, you were young at that point. But what was like the culture shock going from being in Brazil to coming here? If you remember any. Craziest thing to me was like, all right, you go to the beach. Bro, I had to stop doing this. After the first time I ever went to the beach here, bro, I was so embarrassed. I was like six. Bro, we went to Hampton. I saw everybody in shorts. I'm looking around I'm like, damn, I got this like, you know, like like the the, the, the man swim trunks, <laughs> yeah. little boy ass <laughs> swim trunks. I'm looking around. All these niggas got shorts, bro. I'm like, damn. You talking about like the Michael Phelps, like yeah, speedo bro, type bro, shit, because bro? Because in Brazil, that's what everybody <laughs> wear, bro. Were they there for this time? Or no? Nah, nah. They I, nah. Jesus no, Christ. Just me and the fam, bro. But like, yo, that shit was like definitely like, the first bro. culture shock. <laughs> I feel like other countries, though, like, you go to fucking Italy, bro. You got bitches just titties out everywhere. And then I here it's, Italy. like, so parental advisory, bro. Which, I mean, I'm cool with that. Because if the motherfuckers were just walking around, like, naked or half nah, naked yeah, everywhere, I'd be I, like, I, I, This yeah. doesn't even matter to me at this point. <laughs> yeah. But if you go to LA, you might see some shit like that in LA, nah, bro. LA, you'd be seeing some random ass oh, shit, bro. I'd be seeing the craziest shit in LA, dude. Bro, I'd be seeing motherfuckers that have like neon green dogs, bro. They'd be dying their dogs all random ass colors, all this I feel extra bad shit. for LA, though, bro. Like the pandemic really fucked a lot of shit up for people, bro. Definitely did. They, could, they gotta do something about that, bro. That shit's bad. Dude. Did the pandemic fuck anything up for you? Nah, I'm a, the pandemic made my life amazing. And then? It made me me. And then? Hell yeah. I feel like for some people, I understand it. Like it stopped a lot. My, me and my instance, like, it helped me find me for real. Like, if yeah. it wasn't for b- pandemic, I would have never took music seriously. My mm. one, my one fear of music was like everybody was gonna know who I was. Blah blah. blah. I had to break that. The pandemic, I broke that just by growing as an artist. And shit. Uh, what made you like take that extra step? What What was the moment, the shift where you were like, okay, I'm gonna take music serious from now. This is actually something that's possible. I can't lie to you. I, I be having the shift every other couple months. <laughs> damn. Like you know, like some big shit happens. And I'm like, damn, I'm really an artist. I gotta take this more seriously right now. I'm really in my bag right now. I'm in my Duffy. I'm working for real. So, like, I'm in my artist bag. But, like, you know, life is life. Some shit might happen. I might, That's how it is, you know, bro. Life might derail a little bit. I might not feel good. But, shit, I always work myself back up sooner or later. But, you know, when I be down, y'all be hearing the toughest, sad shit. So, like, bro. it's fine. I, don't really. I feel like as an artist, if life, like, if you have too much, this is so fucked up to say, but if you have only good things happen to you, you just blend. You are. You don't have anything to talk about because it's like, bro, realistically, like, and the, the one thing about your music, you do it in a different way because you, I call this like the Juice World effect, which I hate to use because it's not like comparing you to Juice World, but you'll have some shit where it's like a lit ass beat, lit ass vibe, but you're talking about some sad shit or some shit, a painful shit on a song. Um, but what I was saying with the artist going through shit, it's so much more relatable. No, nobody's life is perfect. If you're only talking about good shit, you're talking about fucking bitches, getting money, popping bottles. That's unrealistic. That's not everyday life. Fucking heartbreak, fucking money problems, whatever the fuck it is, bro. Like hearing about all that shit. That's what there's no point in lying, bro. You got to put the raw truth in your music, man. Because that's what people relate to. That's what people relate to. Like you got to really connect. Like if you're just talking about the same shit and like you really put no none of you. Me personally, uh, my artist, I like to put a lot of my life into my music. Like, a couple bars, you might hear some shit I'm talking about, like, that really, like, sticks to me. And I know there's not just me out there living through the same shit. There's, like, so much people on this earth. There's so much of my listeners that definitely go through the same shit. And they can just, some shit they can relate to and just, like, oh, feel God. better off of. Oh, God. You know, just to feel like, oh, damn, someone's there, too. It's not just me. Do you feel like you were like that with your music right off rip? Like, did you have a direction with it? Or was it kind of just fucking around? Nah. Fucking around? Until, like, the first year when I noticed, like, damn, okay. And then, like, I had a crazy-ass heartbreak. Like, when I was a little kid, bro, I was, bro. like, 16. Jesus Christ. That was only because you're 18, right? I'm 19 now. Oh, you're 19, so that was, like, three years ago. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, bro. I was a little kid, bro. I was, like, just sad over some dumb shit. I was like, bro, I don't even know this girl no more. Like, bro, Jesus. just know it's bullshit. Like, I was a little kid. That's how it be. But, like, I was sad as fuck. I made a song called... Damn, what was it? Rewind. Oh, that was the first song I saw on your song Yeah, that was, like, was my gonna first, like, sad me. song, kind of, like... Boom, that shit went crazy as fuck. That's yeah. why I noticed, like, bro, you can really, like, I can't be ashamed of, like, my music. Like, I got to, like, really just put yeah, what goes yeah. on through my life and my music. 
So when you dropped that, was that like you dropped it and then didn't drop for a while and kind of fucked around, or was it like you dropped it and you were like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna keep making? This I was just, shit. Inc- I'm always been inconsistent, kind of, but now I'm like working on getting better at it because like I just like to drop. Okay. Uh, I used to be a little inconsistent. I can say that. I used to be pretty inconsistent. What um like when do you feel like you really found your sound and how did you go about finding it in the first place? After the Revenge EP. The Revenge EP. I was gonna ask about that, so we'll talk about that too. That one's like a. That was a very solid project, but I feel like I just needed to upgrade my sound a little bit to like really get it like perfect to, yeah. to my ears. Cause like some people still love that shit and still want me to do shit like that, but like that's not me no more. Like y'all didn't understand. I was like seventeen. Yeah. Your voice changes. Your life changes, bro. I'm not living the same shit no more. You yeah. Know? How um, do you go about, like, as the sound changes and shit? Because I feel like right now your music is perfect with what's in for right now. Like, I feel like that sound that everyone's listening to, that's what your music is right now. Do you feel like you, along the years, shifted as the tra- sound shifted? Yeah. Or have you, like, been consistent with the same sound, do you feel like? I feel like I, I'm not the same sound anymore, like, at all. Not at all. I had to like. I don't want to sound like everybody else, but I still want to, you know, like do shit that gets people yeah. attention. Attention. So I feel like what I do is like perfect because I, I don't. I don't. Me personally, I don't see nobody I listen. I, yeah. I listen to myself. I don't see me sounding like anyone else. Yeah. No, I don't see you sounding like anyone else. I'm just talking about like the vibe. Like I don't know, like that. Um, like it's not like the sound, but the, the Brit Amiri, like that type of um audience. I don't know if I'm tripping. Like, ye- all that type. I, I know what you mean. Like, not like, oh, it's the same type of music, but if I was to have to narrow no, down I know what you mean. Like the underground, category. Underground. Yeah, 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 yeah. I make like underground music, but I'm That saying, real like, underground sound right now. Own, like, no, you shit. got your own pocket of it. That's what yeah, I like yeah, about yeah. it. It's your own twist on it. It's definitely different yeah, from everything else. Yeah. But if you were to group you in with other artists, it would be like, okay, this person, that person, that person. Like, that's the little pocket that you fall in. Like, it's not like you're placing you over with, like, fucking... The wicked fast Eminem rapping motherfuckers. Nah, nah. Like, that is not your vibe at all. That is not your Although, vibe. Yo, growing up, I used to bump the fuck out of I was going to say, who were your, like, biggest musical influences growing up? I came to America, say? I couldn't listen to rap. Like, really? My parents would not let me solo. When they be, I used to have this basement back in this new place I used to live in, Manchester, yo. I used to go downstairs, take my laptop, because I used to have a laptop. For, I don't know. My mom used to have one, so I used to take her shit. Because who used the laptop back then? Yeah. Go on YouTube. That show's mad laggy. Bro. So Chris Brown, Drake, Lil Wayne, and like Eminem, because my dad watched Eight Mile. And, and you got hugged and because of that. Too, because he get Richard Die Trying at the time. Bro, one day I was like listening to the Chris Brown. No, it wasn't Chris Brown. It was um Love Me by uh Lil Wayne, Future, and Drake. Oh, I know. I know oh my god, the computer fucking about. froze, bro. I was like eight, bro. The computer fucking froze, bro. And my parents walk in the room, like, and they're like, what? Like I'm trying to like exit. Like, they got mad at you shit. because you I'm were closing, listening you to it. Still hear it, bro. I, I swear, I'm closing the shit. You can still hear it. I'm clicking the fuck out the button. It's still going into buffers, <laughs> buffers with the shit playing in the back. Yo, I've never received such an ass whooping for, for listening to rap music. Bro, I got strict Christian parents, and that's Yo. not bad because I'm a Christian myself. But like, you know, like they're strict, 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 strict. Like Jesus, even now, now? of course they're lenient. I was gonna say, I'm me, lenient. bro. Like yeah. I'm my own person. My mom knows that. My dad knows that. But like. Back then, you know, they're trying to keep me focused keep you, on. Keep the handcuffs on you. Keep you bro, in child mode. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, damn, yo. Bro. How old would you say you were when that happened? I was like eight, bro. How old were you when you um started being able to learn English? Because you said the oh, language barrier. Oh, I barely. knew English by my, by my first year. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wasn't a challenge for you too It much. was just annoying, though. Yeah, like, at first. I couldn't even imagine that, bro. Coming to another country and you know, can't funny understand part is, anything. Like, we had a test, and I had like... <laughs> it was like a picture And They knew I was bad at English So they let me take the test home I took the test home You had to spell out the picture in English I show my mom a picture of a banana And I'm like How do you spell this in English? Like I'm like crying <laughs> And they're just laughing at me Like both of my parents are crying laughing Did they me. know English already? To an extent? My dad did Yeah, he Your was dad did know. Oh, okay. But like Bro it's just banana. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to spell banana and get them. Bro, I couldn't even imagine that, dog. I have so much respect, though, for any immigrants that come here and are able to, like, Thank you, bro. actually thrive over here. Because that's not easy, bro. Hell Coming no, here, bro. Hell no. Like, being young is better because that fucking way the brain works, being able to process shit. But really imagine, being, imagine being your age right now and you didn't have that shit happen and you got thrown in Brazil and it's like, you got to go live here. You got to 
get a job. You got to fucking talk to people, get A to Z. I can't lie, though. I dropped out, but I, I can appreciate You it. dropped out of high school? Yeah. What? I, I appreciate what school does for you bro, out here I because, didn't... like, back in Brazil, schooling wasn't like that. I would have never even pictured that bro, you dropped one out, of the teachers, though. One of the teachers back then got physical with me. When I was a little kid, bro, I was, like, five. In Brazil? Or yeah, bro. What the fuck? Like, I had to stop going to that school and everything, bro. Like, that's how it's bad over there. Jesus Christ. I was going to say, because i seen videos, like... All the crazy ass, what's it called, um, favela videos and shit like that. Yo, I be seeing that shit. Whenever my girl be trying to get me to go to Brazil, I'm like, yo, I think I'm good on that. Bro, for that's now. not all Brazil. Is I know Brazil. it's not all of it. No, I know it's not all of it. But, but like, that part's still not bad, bro. It's like, lit, bro. You just got to know what you're doing, you know? Nah. If you walk around like an idiot wearing mad flashy shit, what do you think is going to happen? They're just going to be like, oh, look Obviously, at him. Yeah. Yeah, let him flex. Like, fuck no. Bro, <laughs> Jesus, don't want to see you win. <laughs> Jesus. What made you drop out of school, though? The music picking up or was it yeah, anything bro. else? Music picking up, it's always online, and, like, school's not for me, bro. Like, it's just, I just I just know music's gonna work. I was gonna say, bro, because I, I couldn't even imagine the fact that you dropped out. It makes sense now, but when I first met you, I remember just thinking, when they told me how old you were, I was like, bro, this dude just seems, like, way too mature to be this age. I did not think you were 18. I <laughs> thought you were, like, my age. I'm only 21. <laughs> I thought you were my age. You're fucking a little older, if anything. Um, nah, bro. But how'd you go? When when did you drop out? And how did you go about teaching yourself whatever out. you needed to know? I dropped out at 17. It's still not a decision that everybody fucks with. Yeah. Like, Your parents fuck with it? And damn, I was going to say they're probably anti against it. They'll, they'll understand. When you buy them a crib off of music, they'll, <laughs> they'll get it. My mom respects it, but she doesn't fuck with it. She like, doesn't I, fuck I, with I it. know what's up. My dad either. He doesn't like that shit. So. Your friends supportive? Some of them. But Some I don't really, like, bro, I stopped giving a fuck what people say. Yeah. Because if you do too much, like, never gonna enjoy your own life bro sometimes you gotta fuck up oh god you know the fuck ups are the best part bro if that's you don't I'm fuck saying. up in life they mold you bro they mold you into you oh god that's a fact that is a fact bro what do you feel like music wise has been a fuck up that has helped you like has there been anything that you've ever dropped or something that you've been like okay i'm not gonna do this again like you rushed a song out nah, that you didn't really care like, stop being any. consistent Besides that, you don't have any yeah, regrets? Yeah, I stopped being consistent way too much. And especially when shit picks up, I just feel like I can sit back. When you can't, bro, you got to work even harder. Yeah. So that's why, I like, watch. In a couple months, yo, I'm about to get crazy. You've that's been dropping like a lot, a lot. I got, I'll, I'll talk about the more recent drops, but back to um, the Revenge Project. What was it like, your first EP, putting that together all around? That wasn't the first one, but that was, like, the first real built one. Like, so know, did you archive the first one? Yeah. You archived it? Yeah, it was all right, but, like, it, it was, like, like, sound like everybody else, and it was ass to me. Was People liked it though, but the revenge is like that's like that was really like boom, that surge. Like, no. y'all should fuck with me. boom, like that's really the hmm. and that's then so like it was just like a bunch of vibes, bro. Like, good ass songs for it for everybody was doing. I feel like it was me, it didn't sound like nobody, it was just me, bro. Did you record it at the crib or yeah, every, everything at, was the at, crib? The at the crib at the crib, everything right. until like. <coughs> Up until now, I started recording the studio. Now I'm starting to go to studios. You record with Suitcase, right? Uh, or uh, someone else? Just, that was like, I had a couple sessions with him. You had a couple? I thought you were recording with him heavy for some reason. Who do you um, normally record with? Like, who's your go-to if you had to pick one engineer to lock in with for a whole project? Who are you picking? I don't, or you don't? Really be, I don't have an engineer. I just use beer, I you? myself. Yeah. You? I was going to say. Seems like that. Even you coming here, you're like, can I plug my laptop in? Yeah. Oh, like, this motherfucker. Um, what about producers though? You got any producers you locked yeah, in with? Have bro, you? I'm locked in with mad people. Jay Dollar, off the top of my head, only I can really think. First Class, Bristol, there's Matt Phoenix. There's mad heads, bro. I don't know. There's way too many to name. They're all so talented nowadays. Are a lot of them from here or around? Yeah, they're from all over the place. Around. How you meet them? Instagram, YouTube, yeah, Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. That's fire. That's fire. You be getting the uh, spams in the email. I mean, yo, like, maybe, like, back then when I used to get my email to everybody, but I stopped doing that, bro. People would be, yo, bro, I should be annoying. Uh, every artist complains about it. That's why I ask. Because, bro, it's like, spam the same type of shit over and over. Like, come on. <laughs> I want to hear all that. <laughs> bro, oh, God. No disrespect. That's like me making the same song over and over. People are like, damn, what's wrong with this guy? Oh, God. I'm not going to lie. This old people candy is not about me. <laughs> Spit that shit out of me. Don't fuck with me. Don't lie. <laughs> The old people candy, bro. We don't promote other brands, but shout out to old people candy. I don't know the actual brand name. It's like Witherspoon some shit. Not Reese Witherspoon, but... <laughs> bro, the caramel candy, dog. Um, but after that, if I remember right, the why am I forgetting the name of it? The first Blue Project. 
That was the one after that? Yeah. That So what was that like? Because in my opinion, from what I could see from an outside point of view, that was the first project that you really took serious and was like, okay. Yeah, I'm I was really trying to get in my rap bag. Bro. Yeah. Like, I was like talking shit. Like, he was getting full foot. What was it like making that? And what was the process? That was good. It really on? taught me how to like really rap. Like push it together and like like flows and rhyme schemes and shit. Like I feel like that was the one I really tried my best. What about marketing wise too? Because that was one of the first ones you really did a lot of videos for. Oh right? yeah, I did mad TikToks and shit. I got a couple music videos, but like newer shit's gonna be even more, bro. Mm, blue two, more. I mean two blue is fire, but like blue three, that's the last. Maybe doing another one. That's B L. It's gonna be the last one. It's gonna be crazy as fuck, bro. Bro, before we get into that and blue two, because you just mentioned TikTok, I want to get into that because I feel like you use that to your advantage. How do you feel? It is taking advantage of all the marketing techniques that are here, whether it's posting snippets, posting pictures, TikToks, trailer, whatever TikTok it is. TikTok shenanigans. Fuck TikTok. Bro. Because they be restricting people's pages, and then they'll shadow ban you for no reason, bro. Like, it makes it not even, like... I feel like your shit, though, every time I've seen a snippet from you... It's from there. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. from TikTok. It's but on someone's Instagram. I've been restricted for months, bro. Since, like, July, I've been restricted, bro. Really? I actually don't even post on Join on TikTok. And they... They're yeah. that strict with that shit? Jesus Christ, bro. Bro, it's been three months, and all my friends get banned, too, for no reason. I don't I've get ha- all the censorship shit, bro. Bro, me neither, bro. Like, I really don't. Bro, don't Slump know. be going through it, too, on TikTok. Slump 6? Bro, West don't like t- bro, everybody don't like TikTok sometimes, because they just be, like, banning us for no reason and shit. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know why they be doing that. Instagram be doing that, too, like, shadow banning. You ever been shadow banned on IG? Yeah, or back no? then a lot. Uh, shadow banning be all happen, shit, happens bro. even now sometimes. But like, I don't really care about likes and views and shit, bro. People gonna fuck with me regardless. Uh, I like you really like notice like your followers never go down because people still want to be there to follow you and watch. So like, you think about it when your shit's lifted, like that's how much people are gonna see you. Uh, what do you think? It, does it get stressful at any point, like having to keep up with pictures and stuff? Because I feel like you're very casual with it. Like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. About you, I, you really like have like. No offense, because normally it's an insult, but it's not. You have, like, a SoundCloud rapper attitude, but also, like, this polishness to you where it's, like, official, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't like the whole, like, always having to post and shit. Because, I, be, bro, like, I'm going to be honest. Like, not everybody wakes up to get fresh every day to do that. Like, oh, God. Some oh days God. I just want to chill, bro. I'm oh still God. a regular dude. Wearing pajamas and slides to the studio exactly, and not bro. fucking... Throwing on a Dior fit or some. I mean, like sometimes you really got to put it on if you got some professional shit to do. Yeah, you got got a video, some shit to do. But like, damn, bro, every day you finna step out on Dior, bro. Like, fuck, God, you got it. If me, if you got it, you got it, bro. (laughs) But it'd be overkill sometimes, bro. What casual do, bro? I like to just keep it, keep it dry. With the music all around, bro. Like, I feel like that's one thing. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, I listen to your music, but I don't listen to it like crazy. But whenever I do and your image all around, because I'm just like a little studier. I just study these artists. I see what they got going on. I pay their dues when their dues are respect is due. And one thing about you, it just looks like you're having so much fun with everything. Like, it doesn't look forced at all. Yeah, bro. It doesn't look like, oh, you're just doing it to keep up with anything. It's just like, I feel like dropping shit. I'm going to drop some shit. I'm going to be surged. I don't feel like dropping shit. You're not going to see my name for three months, and I'm fucking not post anything, and then I'm going to post some shit when I'm having fun again. But, like, thank <laughs> Thank you to all my fans, though, for that. Yeah. That means they really fucking with me. Oh, and God. Shit. I love them for that because, like, oh, my God. That means I could really go away, get my mind right sometimes, and come back and be like, yes, he's back. And they always want us new, new music every time. Every right. time. So it's like, you know, that's respect to them. You be dropping mad, bro. That, back to the two blue. And then what was the one back after? To it. The, back to yeah, it. Yeah, back so to slept it. on, dude. Bro, you dropped back to back projects. Why, why'd you drop them so close together? Because I recorded all those in L.A. right after. Jesus Christ. So you dropped the whole project, and then you were like, okay. It's not even... Was it even a full it month a in between? Was it even a full month between? I was going to say, not like even a weeks. full month between. It's like, okay, here's the rest two of the project. Yeah. I stayed in L.A. for a long time. Then. Bro. It was like a month. How's the um, like response on stuff? Like, How do you find out what your fans want? Do you just go off engagement, or are you interacting with your fans a lot? I go off engagement, but engagement? Like, I need to interact more. I interact more. At like, the same time. Like, fuck it. Uh, okay, whatever. Are you not in all that extra, like, besides the music shit? Like, you have any plan to do, like, brand deals or anything? Yeah, bro, like, I want to get into modeling. You want to do modeling shit? You want to yeah. do modeling shit? Let's do that for the merch after this. <laughs> for that, too, let's do some modeling shit. I want to get into modeling, for real, because that's fresh. I like dressing up, but dressing I don't up. know how to dress, you know? So, like, Dang. I have, like, maybe one day I could have, like, one of these crazy-ass designers, like, oh. modeling, nigga. 
Or when that rap check hits, bro, just go to now the store. Now when rap check hits, like, trust, 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 trust. That one's going to be crazy. Bro. Well, going to go up. What other, um, you got any other, like, creative endeavors you want to get to down the line besides modeling? I didn't really put that much thought into it. I need to, though. You definitely should, bro. You definitely should. Cause yeah, I need some shit. Once you open that door, you open the door to millions of other things. The dude I was interviewing earlier was talking about wanting to act and make movies down the line and shit. I would do that, too. No cap, yeah. no cap. I could see myself acting. Well, shit That'd like be that. hard. Shit like that. Anything was like type of like you know like just camera work. Camera work behind the camera. I like being behind the camera. You do. Talk I'm used to not like it. That's why. Hmm. Talking about camera shit because I was gonna ask you videos. You hands on with that shit. Like when you it comes it's not like hands on. Like oh I'm the one filming it. But say he shoots a video or you shoot a video with dark sight. You sitting in there on Facetime or in person with him while he's editing it, like yo, do this sometimes, specific sometimes thing. We just read text, like I'm just, just read this text. I just be like, yo, keep this, this, and that, and, like certain shit. You normally heavily involved with the planning though, and like what you want to do, or is it more just like go with the flow? Like, the planning is Once like go, go with the flow. flow. Go with the flow. Yeah, I like running guns. Guns, <laughs> bro, like guns. bro, come on! Not every time you have to have some cinematic ass fucking like movie video, like that shit's so annoying yeah. to watch every time. Oh god! I like turning on like it's a hard ass song. Like, all right, so, for example, Chief Keef, hard-ass song. He's just driving in his fucking car with those big-ass fresh goggles and the yellow jacket. Like, calm shit, that's so fly to me. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's some day-to-day shit. So I, I could put on a yellow jacket and put some fucking sunglasses on and be like, damn, I'm fly as shit. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just real, talking about that authenticity. Ah, authenticity. Yeah, bro. Like, facts. Bro, you literally just fucking shoot a video with you guys going to get McDonald's fucking around. Make that a goal. <laughs> Talk about casual shit. Literally, just go to McDonald's. Nice. Nobody better steal this idea. We got two weeks for you guys to do this. Go to the play place, fuck around, fucking go through the drive through throw food or some shit. What a fun fuck around video right there. <laughs> some shit like that. But, no, nah, that's what I... You, you'll have, like, a crazy-ass video with Darkseid come out. And then I don't know if he's the one shooting it or whatever, but then they'll just fun, like, joy, giggity, like... We're just fucking around. This is fucking fun type shit. No, with Dark Side, we be, we, like, because I be, be in LA. I like, I like LA scenery a lot. So I'll plan some shit out in LA. But, like, even here, I'll plan some shit out here, too. But I don't like doing the whole cinema shit, bro. I like the calm, relaxed vibes. Quick shit. What's your relationship like with Dark Side? That's my dog. I fucking love Dark Side. Dark Side, Woody, Aiden, shit's called them out there. Shout out to them. Who else besides him, too? Mention his name, too, because I don't think you said That's his name, but. That's JD. That's Damien. I always get it wrong. NTGF and GTF Media. Okay. And GTF Media. I always get it wrong. Shout out and GTF Media. <laughs> They're just shaking their heads by the what camera right mean? now. Okay, so never going to fold. And GTF. Okay. Now we'll never forget. going to fold media. I like that. I like that. I like that. Shout but out to them. How, um, what was I going to say? Fuck. I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, you were saying you got other shit planned. What other shit you got? Playing, like, when can people expect you to drop again anytime soon? Oh, I'm planning to drop, like, next couple of days. Next couple of days? Yeah. Do you be dropping every week? Nah, I just... Not every week, shit. but... I'm going to tell you the real the real search secret. I wait till, the, like, the last two songs will get, like, ran up crazy. And, like, say if one does, like, 10K and the other one does, like, 80K, all right, it's time to drop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like, say, okay, so if it doesn't happen, and I'll be like, all right, it's been three weeks, fuck it. That one's just going to run up as it runs up. Drop something new. Hmm. Give it some time. If that one goes crazy, I'll just sit down just to make it feed on it. And because shit, that one might go crazy too. Uh, and then that's how it just goes off. Huh, huh. That's the search sauce. You search can use sauce. it. Use it because it's never going out again. I'm going to have some new sauce next week. You never know. The surge formula, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, my bad. Talking about collaborators, because I was going to bring up shows. I know you worked with like Deb Stacks before. Who are some other people you've collaborated with, slash some of your favorite people to work with? I fuck with Dev, hell yeah. Slump, my doggy, Wes, Bino, my boy Fat John, he was just in here. I didn't I think I oh no, I did see him. I yeah, did see him. I did see him. Fat did John's see him. a goat. Uh who else I be working with, bro? Honestly, Capo, Levi, Tay. We gotta get some shit in, but other than that, bro, I don't really Other than that, you just said a whole ass list of people you be rocking with. <laughs> Yeah, but like I don't, even, I barely have songs with them. That's, that's oh. people I want to work with this shit. Oh, and like okay. some people I have, some people I haven't. Okay, okay. But like, yeah, those are those are people I like to work with. Hmm. Like I don't really work with a lot of people in general, or I, some most of the time I don't even work with them. Like those are just my Damn. dogs, like you know. Yeah, uh, I feel like that's what it's like uh, most of the time, especially when it's gonna end up being actual good music. You're cool with a group of people for a while. You might not make a song together for a year. You guys all make music, but then when you do go make that song together. 
that shit's gonna hit. I don't know if I'm tripping, but me, I've had bro, like three people say that recently to me. Me, bro, it's like I respect everybody's career. I just have my own. Yeah. So like, as much as I love everybody as a human and everything, like, kind of just want my own shit going on. Yeah. And maybe once I my own shit blows that. off, like, I respect that. I'll do some shit with more people, like you know what I mean. But I just need the surge name to go out. So you don't want nobody giving you no handouts with features or nah. nothing. You just want to make a name nah, off so shit. I used to wait for shit like that, but now nah, I want. I respect the I want really like that. pop shit when I blow. Like yeah, I, I did this shit. Me. That shit. I respect the fuck out of that shit. That's fire. That's fire. Talking about um performing though. I love performing. I was gonna say, have you only performed here? Have you performed? Nah, I performed in LA. I was here. Say, I thought you did. Yeah, yeah, it. But like Worcester and then Boston. When was your first show? LA, no soap show. <laughs> How was that? You get some Yo, jitters. That was pre show jitters. And young bands was opening. I saw young bands in backstage. I was like, what the fuck? That's young bands. Oh, bro. Autumn. I saw Autumn there. Autumn's like, it's tough as fuck to me. Damn. It's hard. Who else? Highway was there. He's hard. There's more people, bro. But young Chris was there, bro. A lot, a lot of people were there. There's a video of Autumn like shouting me out at the end. I was like, Damn, yo, that's bro. crazy, bro. I bumped this. Were you nervous before, bro? I performed so ass. Really? <laughs> My first performance, bro. It was ass though. Yeah, bro. I'm not gonna lie. After that day, I hit the gym crazy. You were gassed the whole time, bro. Oh yeah, bro. I was tired as fuck. I was like. <laughs> like I'm supposed to be on the crowd or some shit, but now watch, yo, I'm about to do some. I'm about to be like Kevin Gates on that bitch. Yo. I heard your last show. Or I don't know if it was your last show. Was it the one you did? The was it Unlocked or was it the yeah Unlocked? You Unlock- did a show with them, yeah, J Lock. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a show. Yeah, the shit you that did wasn't my them. last one though. But I heard that shit was crazy. That shit was. Crazy. I heard was that like, shit was crazy. Yeah. Everyone I know, because like PA went there. Um, Axel went there. Mad people were just saying you turned that shit the fuck up. Like, yeah. Axel was preaching to me. I actually got to tell him I did an interview with you because he was freaking I got out. Some new shows long. coming up though. If I want to go, maybe one, you got any around here? Maybe one in twenty seventh here, but okay. New York twenty sixth. Okay, okay. Not this month. Shit. November. November. Okay. Well, I'll try and get out there. If you don't do one here, I gotta go oh, to yeah, more bro. shows. I gotta get out the shows. <coughs> what do you like um more, LA or New York? Because it seems like you go to New York a lot too. You seem uh, like well, LA. I've been to New York a couple of times. I like going to Jersey. My manager out there knew. Jersey? Yeah. Bro, no disrespect. I hate the smell of New Jersey. Every time I've gone there. It smells weird. Bro. And, and it, it, every makes, time. it makes me smoke uncomfortable. Because <laughs> it's like the aroma of weed is already there. And then the aroma of New Jersey. Mm, bro. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Every <laughs> time I smell New Jersey, I'm just like, I don't even know how the fuck this shit smells like this. Shout out to like, Jersey, though. We were in the cleaner <laughs> side. <laughs> Everyone I, be finding these lit ass parts of New Jersey. And all my experiences in New Jersey it. It are was the complete ass, opposite. It was asked for you. Okay. No, okay. Not, <laughs> I mean, not disrespect Jersey because it's a beautiful spot. Like, you know, tough people, whatever. But, like, New Jersey was boring, bro. Uh, it was boring, bro. New I think York it's because Levi and Capo are cuffed, so it's like, you know? You're I'm not like, cuffed? Nah. I'm like, so it's like them, they don't want to go outside. I was trying to go outside, bro, trying to have parties and shit. Man, them, nah. Damn. Damn. What do you, um like, do for fun? Party? What, what's nah, what's I'm you a to, boring dude, bro. I'm boring dude? I go outside and hang out with Fat John. <laughs> I play 2K. Play 2K? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean that's some real shit though. You don't need to be going fucking popping bottles, fucking. Nah, dude, there's moments, nigga. Obviously, there, there's no moments, but that's not gotta bro. be. Nah, nah, let me, let me not get it wrong. I be getting lit. I be getting turned. Like, don't get it wrong. But <laughs> like most of the time, just chilling my dogs. I was gonna say from how much energy the music is packed with, you have to be lit at some point. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I gotta be. I gotta be turned, bro. Like I can't just be a boring guy. But at the same time, what the fuck? I gotta put on for the boring dudes. Uh, you know, just, there's a lot of us out there, bro, that just don't want to be partying all the time. Like, of course I party. I'm not like a lame ass nigga that's like, ah, uh, fuck no. But like, damn, bro, you really need to start like sipping Casamigo at like ten day, o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like you're more productive when you're not partying shit as much. <laughs> you're not more productive. It's the same. <laughs> it's the Every same. day's a party. <laughs> It's just a private party sometimes. I respect that because if I'm partying all the time, I am not getting as much work done. <laughs> I'm I think it's only because, like, when I get lit, I like to record. You do? Yeah. It's a di- I'll make less music because I'm, like, slower. But, like, when I'm, like, you know, a little turn. Uh, yeah, how often do you make music? Would you not say? Not as often. Not as often anymore? Nah. Like, I, it was always not as often. The thing is with me, bro, I could take, like, a week break. That one day I record, I make, like, ten songs. Damn. So it's, like, I have enough songs. Like, and if I'm still feeling it, like, this week I might feel it. So I made, like, what, eight today in, like, a couple hours. 
boom, from eight tomorrow I might record like four. The next day I might record like three, and now I'm like, all right, bro, I'm just gonna take a break for a couple of days, and then three days later make go like back 10. to it. Shit, how big's your vault? I lost so many songs already. Like really? I have like seven different computers with lost songs, bro. How the hell have you gone through seven computers? Cause I just buy the cheapest one. I don't give a fuck. Like it's the same shit, bro. Why am I gonna buy a che- like expensive one, bro? If you just bought one expensive one, you wouldn't have gone through seven. <laughs> but like with those seven, with those seven computers, I've made like triple the amount of money true, from them. True. You yeah, don't put your like shit on hard drives. I try. I be high as fuck, bro, and just clicking shit. Bro, <laughs> you better get. Uh, do you have a manager? Yeah. CJ, right? Is CJ your manager? Nah, he's not my manager. It's, oh, um, I don't know why I thought Ben he Baker, Alex, and Neil. Huh? You better get them to get a hard drive and keep all your songs. I have them, but I lost it. I don't know. Uh, There's mad songs in there. Hopefully, too. someone don't start dropping your music. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I'll get me mad, bro. Someone's about to steal. Yeah, yeah, all someone's the gonna words, drop bro. it for me, and then I don't have to drop no more. Sh- shit. <laughs> um, what are your like real goals though with this music shit? Just in life in general, if you got any goals outside of that, like. What do you want to see yourself five, ten years from now? I want to be like a mogul, like, like, like not like a crazy like. I don't care for, to become like a crazy household name that people gonna be like, oh my god, but like, like people are gonna know me enough to be like, damn, yeah, I respect to that guy, just because of my hustle alone. That's right. You know, because I feel like the more I grow, the more my people are gonna get more into my story in my life, and when I really get into it, it's gonna be crazy. Shit, step by step. Step yeah. us up. For now, they could just know this. Uh, do you feel like you get more love from the state or out of state right now? Both. Both. I feel like it's pretty even. I like this. I like. I like New England, bro. New England people like me. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what it is. New England people really fuck with me. That's good. And but like when I'm outside of state, people fuck with me too. So it's like, <laughs> damn. Like, cause if you go to a community of music in LA or something, they will know who you are. Hmm. Like. Some like you get a handful of people like no cap. I just went to the Pierre show. I was surprised as fuck. Mad people know who you were. Bro, mad people knew who I were, bro. Fire. I was like, damn, that's crazy. That's fire. I felt like a celebrity. That's fire. That like fire. that fire. show was tough. Um, what do you feel like though about the Boston or Mass scene? I hate saying Boston. Mass scene, New England scene, all around. I don't. I don't really pay attention. You don't really pay attention. Bro, I really pay attention artists? to me. Really? Nobody else. Like I respect, I respect, that. That. I respect, I respect them. That. They're putting yeah. work for sure. Like, but like, I just when it comes to music, I just pay attention to my music. That's fine. Mine and the people I talk to. Stay in your own lane for the most part. You aware of anything, or not really aware of a bunch of them? Damn, bro, you got. I don't care enough, bro. We got a lot of hidden talent in these oh, realms. Talent? No, there's hella talent. That, if you mean like that, if you, I think meant like the politics and shit. Hell, oh man. no, I was just asking like Massachusetts, like oh, music artists? in general, artists, any artists no, you no, fuck with that, in particular? Yeah, I fuck or? with Dev. Yeah, I fuck with Dev, JXL, bro. This is mad artists, bro. Boston's like full of people, bro. It's full of big artists. Fat John, bro. It's mad people, bro. Do you feel like if you weren't to reach out to those other states, you could have gotten the traction that you got um, by just being in Massachusetts? Or no? Do you feel like it took you going to other states to really get traction? I feel like that the internet, the way it is, you can blow up it anywhere. Happen regardless, you think? Especially with the underground, you got fans everywhere in the underground. I mean, of course, I feel like if you were born, if you were stuck in like Atlanta or somewhere like that and you're making music, you're going to get a little bit more traction because like yeah. Atlanta's bumping for a lot of artists. But like at the end of the day, the internet is the internet. People are just going to go listen to what's hard. That's facts. That's facts. How do you go about, we're running up on the end already because I've been flying through these questions just off the dome, but how do you go about like getting blog coverage and shit? Because I feel like you're pretty good with getting that. Like blogs and shit? Like blogs and just media pages to post your shit. Because I feel like I'd be seeing your shit. It just be posted. I never really asked. You never have submitted it or anything? We just, me and my management just really start, recently started talking about doing shit like that. But I've never, I just never still even gotten into I'd be lazy, bro. It's bro. Fun. I feel it, like that shit's crazy. It will help, like, for sure. But I'd just be lazy, bro. You sound like you've been blessed with a lot of shit to just take music so casual. And then it's just like, okay, like, this is happening. You've been taking it serious, but you've kind of been fucked around, but this is going to happen. Take it more serious. It sounds like God's just throwing these things in front of you to be like, lock in. Yeah. <laughs> I do got to take it more seriously. Bro. Well, it seems like you've taken it more serious the past like year. Ever since I've been aware of you, definitely like I've never got that vibe like you're a half ass artist or nah, anything. Nah, I I've never gotten I definitely, that vibe I definitely from made you. my craft. But at the same time, I do, I feel like I could work harder. Always. Bro. You can always work harder, bro. Yeah. That's a fact. Even when you're working your absolute hardest, you could still be doing something even fucking better. You could still be. There's always levels to this shit. It's it's never sucks, perfection. But. Perfection isn't a thing, bro. Everything's imperfect. Oh God. oh, God. Everything's imperfect, but imperfection is beauty, so. 
Would you say you're a perfectionist or? Oh yeah, there's hella yeah. fuck ups in my life and my music and everything, but that's what makes me though. That's fact. You don't know, can't be a perfect ass dude. Your music's hella perfect all the time. Like hella people that do that. Hella people want their shit mad perfect. It's not like everybody else. Yeah, uh, that's that's facts. You feel like the industry overall? Have you dealt with a lot of bullshit, or do you, you seem like someone who just stays aside from all the industry bullshit? I don't give a fuck about what people like. I'm not gonna lie. If I don't care for you, I don't give a fuck about what happens in your life, how you woke <laughs> up, how you went to sleep, bro. I just care about me and mine. That shit. They're trying exactly. to put on for me and mine because they're not trying to put on for me. So why the fuck should I care for them? Oh God. Oh God. You seem like you just stay in your own lane, and you're like, bro. Anything else? You're not in my <laughs> world. <laughs> nah, <laughs> really. That. That's that what is, you that like. That's I don't even be on my phone, bro. People get mad at me because I don't text back. I don't, bro. Like I don't be on, on anything on my phone. Like I hate being on my phone too. I, I just live phone. life, bro. And if I do go on my phone, I'm just listen to music all day. Uh, I be listening to some bullshit too. I was gonna say, what you be listening to? Right now, I'm just listening to hell of Detroit music. Detroit music and my music. Skiller baby. Detroit music, bro. Oh yeah. I would not take you for a dude to listen to Detroit shit. No, Detroit music's lit. And Detroit music is lit. Detroit music is lit. But That's it's a bad, shit. mad different, mad raunchy. <laughs> Detroit and Pierre, because I I just went to the Pierre concert. That shit Pierre was crazy. Concert. What's his name? Chavo was supposed to come through here. Really, his music was through. wild at the Pierre concert. Bro. When I saw him, I was like, yo, that's fucking Chavo. Dude, they all went there, and then <coughs> I didn't go with them, but they all went there, and they were talking about how lit it was. I got a call from a random ass number the next day. They were like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's Pierre Bourne's artist, Chavo, blah, blah, blah. They were going to book then like 20 minutes before. They are like, we're not coming. Next day, they call me again. Same shit happens. I get everyone at the studio hype. Same thing. 30 minutes before, they are like, yeah, we're not coming. So he didn't end up coming, but he was supposed to. So shout out to shout him. Shout out to him, but he still go, yo. His music's tough. Oh. Uh, I didn't even know I'm. I, I live under a rock, bro. I didn't even know Pierre Bourne made actual music besides beats until that concert, bro. I live under a fucking rock, dog. I swear I to God, he was gonna say until like blah blah blah. No, until, until like, the like, concert, bro. I knew about his beats and shit. Obviously, I was hip to that, but I had no idea that he actually like spit on songs, bro. I'd be living under a rock until I started doing all this media shit and stuff, bro. I was like an old fashioned motherfucker. I can't even lie. Like the newest shit I listened to was like. Kanye shit or some Meek Mill shit. Like I was an extra mm-hmm. old head bro listening to Mad Wu Tang, Tupac and shit until I met Sully and shit and started respect, doing respect, this. Though. I love Kanye music, bro. Kanye, Kanye's a Kanye, Kanye is a go. Kanye is a go. Kanye is a go. Kanye is a go. Fucking he doing some weird shit, but he a go. <laughs> bro, the fucking Instagram post the past couple days, yeah, yo. Yeah, I don't know. He's just him. The Instagram post the past couple days, bro, were fucking ridiculous. I don't, I mean, it's just him, bro. Like, I, but that, like I said, weird shit makes you. So, like, oh shit. god, like whatever he does, that's his life. Oh, uh, oh god, oh god. I can't judge a soul, man. That's facts. How do you feel about like the whole social media thing? Do you feel like it's all bullshit, or would you say your social media is like a fair representation of you, or that's like less than five percent of you? Touch it you? is a representation of you to an extent. Like, social media is only what they can see. You don't know how like people are really are unless they like they really show you how they yeah. are. Like a person like, <coughs> like a Kanye, he's showing you how he is. Or like say if like someone's off the internet, but they still like when they're on there, you, you know what they're doing. Like yeah. that's you know what's up. But like some of these guys, you don't know how they are off the internet. Yeah, like, that's facts. It's like some weird shit. A lot of people be fake as fuck. A lot of people be fake as fuck. That's just life, bro. That's why I rather just not talk to nobody. I don't have to deal with no fake shit. You keep a small circle? Not even a small smir- circle, bro. It's like if I re- if people don't hit me up sometimes, I you won't hear from me for months. Cause like, bro, I, I don't have time to like focus on nobody but me. Cause like, no one's gonna put that bread in my pocket but me. Oh so. god, oh god, nobody's gonna do shit. Nobody's gonna chase your dream for you. Nobody's exactly, gonna pay your bills. Bro. Nobody's gonna put food in your mouth. No. Not to say you don't need company, bro. You def- people you definitely, definitely need do. friends sometimes. Definitely we do. Definitely do. But no one's gonna do anything for you the way you will. Can't, you can't be expecting too much from people. Oh, God. And if you do have somebody that's doing more for you than you are, you better keep that yeah, person yeah. in your fucking life. Yeah. Oh, or God. just right. work to do the same shit. Oh, so God. Then y'all can oh, just God. double that. Literally. Okay. No but, shit. We're already at like 40 fucking minutes and I'm running out of questions. <laughs> we're at 45 minutes, dog. That shit, I'm telling you, bro. Don't even feel like cameras out here. That's why I don't like fucking looking at questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just doing it off the dope. But,. Any fucking shout outs or actually no, before we get to that, any advice you would give to any artist if somebody was just starting music right now and this interview was the first video they stumbled across looking to get advice, what advice would you give to an artist don't, just starting music right now? Don't stress yourself over thinking of like, oh, I got to sound like what everybody else likes because if you sound like you, 
people will like you. Someone out there is going to like you. Of course, that doesn't mean, like, if you're like, bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say it. Some people are utterly ass. That's like, fact. it doesn't mean, like, be utterly ass and be like, okay, people are going to like me because I'm ass. Like, nah, like. Work on that work shit. Work on that <laughs> shit to pe- for people to like you. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, God. I was shitty at one point, too, bro. Everybody was shit. I recorded on my fucking phone for, like, a year until I bought I bought equipment off my phone, Was bro. your first song off the phone? Yes. Damn. Everything was off the phone for, like, like six months, bro. I Jesus. worked my way up to buying a laptop for, like, $250 and equipment. Equipment off my friend for like seventy five dollars. That's fine. And I was blessed to get a mic for free. Part of the process. Probably. And then my first laptop was free, but I had no mic. So like I was recording on my my phone. I'd export it, send it to a laptop, edit. And it was just like baby step. Yep. Damn. Like Damn. But I'm telling you, bro, it's difficult. But like, if you really want to work to get there, that's how I feel like. That's why my like at certain times it feels like oh it's a blessing, like it's just placed in front of me. But like, at the same time, I worked for that shit. Like oh, I really bro. did. So I feel like I molded enough into like. Now it's just like a smooth sail. I just got to really just work and it's going to happen. Uh, that's definitely a piece of advice too. Is this shit is not no overnight shit. It's a oh, lot of baby steps, brick by work. brick. And that shit is going to take a long time. Okay, bro. <laughs> that shit is going to take a long time. The dude that was on the episode before was saying, um, on average, it takes someone 10 years to make it in music. And that's like an accurate representation. And that's kind of facts. If you look at it, a lot of people, bro, they'd be doing it. Even if they started rapping, say the first time they touched a mic was... When they were 12 and they blew up around 20, like, that type of age frame. I can't really put, like, a time limit, but, like... You can't put a time limit on it. It's different for everybody. But roughly, anywhere, I'd say from, like, 5 to 10 years, I'd say, is what it takes to really make it in this music thing. Unless you're, like, a Juice World or some shit where you just get that fucking spark immediately. But it's definitely a marathon, not a race, as cliche as it is to say. Okay. Um, But any shout-outs or anything? Any upcoming drops you want to mention? Anything? Blue 3 on the way... Uh, a lot of more singles for real on the way or no kizzy whatever i name it we get lit on tiktok again just drop a bunch of more snippets for y'all shout out to everybody man shout out to shout out to y'all that came with me man shout out to y'all shout out to fat crispy shout out to you guys appreciate you do whatever don't man shout out to shout out to everybody who rock with me man there's too many names if you know you rock with me back in the city what's up to you my dog you know you're rocking with me all over the states shout out to you Shit. Say your Instagram too? Surge TNT on Instagram. Surge on SoundCloud. Surge on uh Surge Blue on Twitter. Some shit like that, but you gonna find it. Uh TikTok, Surge TNT, everything, man. <laughs> Basically just look up Surge and you'll see the man's name. Surge or Surge TNT, one of the right, Surge Surge or Surge TNT. <laughs> but hey, this has been a good one, man. This has been a good Thank one. I appreciate you, you. I appreciate you for coming on, bro. bro I appreciate you for coming my on. My pleasure, bro. It was hey. amazing. I fuck with it for real. I didn't even know we were I on for that long. Bro, I didn't. I'm telling you, it'll be <laughs> fine. The one I did earlier was an hour and a half, and I didn't even realize. I've done this for like two hours and 30 minutes before without realizing, bro. I'm telling you, shit get crunchy. It's <laughs> crazy. It's like the camera's in here. That's hard, but bro. I appreciate you doing it, bro. Thank Everybody you, watching, man. follow this motherfucker on all platforms. If you don't go stream his music, I don't know. I can't put threats in a YouTube video. YouTube sensitive as fuck. Um, I shouldn't even swear like that. (laughs) But use promo code PERP15. It should be active by now to get a discount on merch. All these items will be for sale. Go cop some merch off the website. I can't threaten you once again, so I'm not gonna. But cop some merch, please. Like I said again, follow Surge. Follow Do Over Don't. Smash that fucking like button. Smash that subscribe button. And buy some merch. <laughs> Tune into next week's episode. And run up Pink World. Run up Pink World. Deuces. Party at bad bitches. Whoa, cut the shit up my mentition. Started out washing my wrist. I'm down with this shine and glisten. Why when I tell my shit, they never listen. She get caught up in a